views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Let the transition begin. Welcome to Majestic Insights Radio, success for life's transitions with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, most vibrant life. Carrie gives you the tools for transformation that will help you experience success for life's transitions. Now here's your host, Carrie Keith. Hello, everyone. I'm Carrie of Majestic Insights Radio. Welcome. You can catch us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. You can also find out more about me at MajesticInsights.com because I have Majestic Insights Coaching, and we believe in awareness and positive, unlimited potential. So today on Majestic Insights Radio, we have a wonderful, wonderful guest, Adele Kuhn, and Our topic is listening to animals, and Adele has written that book, Listening to Animals, and she is so wonderful, one of my favorite people. She is a wildlife rehabilitator, so you know, the baby turtle gets hurt, everybody in the area takes it to Adele, and she fixes it and gets it back into its natural habitat. She also is very experienced with exotic pets, and telepathy with animals, and then atheism to spiritualism. So her book is Listening to Animals, and then subtitles, Wildlife Rehabilitation, Exotic Pets, Telepathic Communication, and Atheism to Spiritualism. And that's a lot of mouthful, and it's a wonderful book, and it's very well written, and I want to welcome Adele Kuhn. Hi, everyone. It's nice to be here. How are you? I'm doing great. Yes, very good. I love Adele's spiritual journey in writing her book. Tell us about what, because she is a wonderful woman with her unique talents, and she put it out there, and I think that's so powerful and so healing. Tell us about your book and what drove you to get it out there. Actually, it was the animals. In fact, there was a parrot who told me two years before I even thought about writing a book that um, that I would be writing a book about them and, and telepathic animal communication. And I just spaced it off because I had no intention of writing a book. And more than two years later, when I had some unusual experiences with a deer that I raised, um, I decided I needed to write a book about him. And then it expanded, and I started writing about the rest of the animals, and I put, started putting the communications in, the animal communications that I'd had done with them. And um, I came across that one from Tisha, and I thought, whoa, <laughs> two years later, and I had totally forgotten what she said, and here I was writing a book that I had no idea I was going to write. <laughs> so it was awesome. Tisha was that way, too. She was, yes. <laughs> So I think everybody, even when they don't know it or not, get animal messages. And, you know, maybe the eagle swooshes your car. That really actually happens in Montana. And, and or the cats on the road or whatever the message is, I think that they present themselves to us to leave us a message and I always encourage everyone to go look up that lesson. You can Google it or there's many animal lesson books out there to go what does that lesson mean? The med- the medicine cards are a good one. You just go look up that message. I think that they're very blessed in their messaging to us, and it's important that we listen to that. I agree, and they're always um, positive and kind and helpful. Um, I've been astounded at uh, at the kindness that's shown by these beings. And and so the messages, looking them up in the books, as Carrie said, is is really a great idea. And I find so many times that I'd been wondering about something or having a problem with something, and then I come across an unusual experience with a particular animal. Look up its its messages, and it fits and it's helpful to me in my dilemma. 
So, so yeah, even if you don't actively talk with them or know that you're talking with them, their messages are really powerful. We're going to talk about that and a little bit about telepathy in general, especially with animals and how you can enhance that. Adele and I are both hypnotherapists, and we can do um, communication. Everyone can do communication with animals in an etheric plane sense. But um, you can just look up the lesson on Google. I mean, it's just so many ways you can interpret that. It doesn't matter how left brain or right brain you are to be able to use the animals as spirit guides. True. Yes, they make marvelous guides. Okay, so tell us more about this book because it's listening to animals, but you have so much packed in here. Tell us about the different subtitles. Well, I'm, as Carrie said, I'm a wildlife rehabilitator in western Montana. So I take care of injured and orphaned wild animals and um, with the intention of releasing them into the wild. And I've taken care of many different kinds. Um, right now I have uh, an elk calf and five white-tailed deer fawns. And I take care of the birds as well. I raised a, a golden eagle baby a couple of years ago and was able to give him back to his parents when he was able to fly. And all kinds of things. And I feel so honored to be able to have that kind of contact with these amazing animals. They, they just are astounding. An exotic pet. Exotic pets. I've I've kept exotic pets from the time I was a, a child and off and on. And um, snakes and parrots and and frogs and all kinds of things. And uh, Yeah, the wombats more... and emus and <laughs> <laughs> actually it is they're kangaroos or wallabies, but wallabies, um, yeah. yeah. Emus, yeah. But um the the more I learn about them through telepathic animal communication, the more I feel that we really do them a severe unkindness by keeping them in captivity. If you move up to the level of spirit, however, they volunteer to put themselves in those positions in order to help teach us. But I think it's time we really started learning and started treating them more as uh, sentient beings who have feelings and needs and emotions like we do and we cannot fulfill their needs in captivity not the way they live in the wild we can't re reproduce that and you feel that way about the exotic pets not necessarily you know your puppy dog or do you the, feel that about the dogs and cats and such have been with us for so many generations, both ours and theirs. And with all the captive breeding programs, the selective breeding programs, we have selected four characteristics, including personality characteristics in them that are more pleasing to us. So they really are not the same as their wild ancestors. Okay. But the parrots and the snakes and all of uh, even the elephants, um, all of the things, those have not been with us in that way for that long. And they really are wild beings and, and I believe deserve to be in their native environment. A, yeah, I had a friend who's passed now, but he had a, a gray wolf as a, as a dog, as a domestic pet. And they had much love for each other. And in that way, it worked. Mm -hmm. but uh called him baby but baby would run run off he needed to run and you can't run if you're trapped in a house you know yeah. and i just i saw the love between them and then i saw his need to run and then when they changed the laws you couldn't let him out at all and i just felt so sorry for him not being able to be free and run yeah yep i agree and it's the same with with all of the others i think that it's just not, we don't, we can't supply their their basic needs. Okay, their so needs. on telepathic communication, we'll talk about that all um, when we come back from the break coming up. But um, telepathy, of course, can be with anyone or anything that has a soul or an energy field, and not necessarily just animals, but it's very special in animals, I believe. I would agree. Definitely it is. 
and and definitely I agree that we can communicate with anything that that is made up of energy, which is everything. And then we'll also talk about atheism atheism to spiritualism and how the animals helped you find your way to spiritualism so you can get adele on facebook at listening to animals and you can get a hold of me at majestic insights.com or you can email me at majestic insights at gmail.com or you can call and leave a message at 503-400-4603 And you can check out some of the new custom coaching packages on Majestic Insights also. And we will be right back after our break. I'm just mad about saffron. Oh, saffron's mad about me. Just mad about saffron. She's just mad about me. They call me mellow yellow. Quite rightly. On the cutting edge of the new mainstream, Christine Upchurch is passionate about bringing together science, psychology, and spirituality in a way that can be applied to our everyday lives for true transformation. The Christine Upchurch Show, stellar conversations to illuminate your journey, engages some of the most outstanding visionaries on the planet in lively dialogue to inspire you to become that bright light you're meant to be. Join Christine every Friday at 11 a.m. Pacific Time on KKNW, AM 1150, and Transformation Talk. Radio. Are you ready for a radical shift in your way of being? Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Awakened Living Radio is a show dedicated to helping you embrace a life filled with profound peace, connection, and happiness. TJ Woodward is passionate about helping you find your clarity, balance, and purpose. Join co-host TJ Woodward and Dr. Pat Basili on the first Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific Time for Awakened Living Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com. We Carry the Light with host Dr. Susan Allison is the show that inspires you to find the light within and shine your light in the world. You'll hear from guests who model how to be the highest, brightest, most evolved, fulfilled, and conscious humans possible. Tune in each Thursday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com and let Dr. Susan help you discover that you carry the unique light that only you can shine. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. This inspiring show will help you never feel helpless in life or love ever again. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific Time right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 1-0-Q, what a great song. It's just perfect for today. Like a circle goes around. <laughs> we have our guest today, Adele Kuhn, who wrote Listening to Animals. And thank you for coming, Adele. Thank you for having me, Carrie. So talk to us about 
telepathic communication with animals. I'm not even sure where to start with that. I really <laughs> believe that any of us who have lived with animals or who pay much attention to them have had telepathic animal communication with them. Um, our pets tell us things, and and I've found that often when I thought something popped into my head and was my brilliant idea, it was actually them telling me something or wanting me to pay attention to something. So I think that that anybody who really does love an animal gets those kinds of things and has feelings about them that that are actually coming from the animal. Sometimes we don't recognize it as such, but um, but we do pick up things that are not just from our observations of their behavior and so forth. That's I what I that's used to Im- believe it would be. But I think that's why it's so important in your book and to uh, make people aware that they need to listen because the animals are so humble and caring that they... Well, sometimes, you know, the deer attacks your car. <laughs> They're really trying to get you to slow down and pay attention. But usually it's it's they don't take credit for the lesson or whatever you're getting in. And we do think it's our own thing. And then we think it's a death where if we stop and give them a little credit for helping us with the message. Also, too, I find when you align yourself, well, there's four kinds of telepathy. There's Um, solar plexus to solar plexus, there's heart to heart, there's mind to mind, and there's soul to soul. And I believe the animals, it's easy to do the soul to soul thing. And I find a lot of the people like you and others, even with domestic pets that specialize in that, they have a, that's how they align their soul to source is by getting to the place where they can connect to that animal. Yes, I would agree with that. And and really, it's mostly, as much as possible, a, man, a, a matter of being still and open and just taking in whatever pops up. Allowing. To, yeah, allowing, exactly. Trying to quit, as you said, overthinking and and figuring things out and such but just let go and I find it helpful if I have a piece of paper just close my eyes and relax and and think about the animal and then maybe ask a question and then write down whatever pops up and sometimes it'll be a color it'll be a feeling there'll be a picture um something anything and it doesn't matter it may be a word or a few words or full sentences for that matter and it doesn't make any difference how it comes in any of those things is valuable and and any of them is valid and different people do it in different ways there is no one right way to do that we do it with people too we we read their energy fields we pick up things that they're thinking and again, we think that either it isn't valid, we're not, we're just making it up, or we think that it's something that we're figuring out intellectually rather than picking up telepathically. But it's really that. fun when we open that up. When I do healings on people, um, especially people in chronic pain or something like that, I'll get words like maybe blue or red if you get a sign like that then say the word the from the healer standpoint or from the animal standpoint if they flash you red and you're supposed to say red maybe when you say red and make your energy that color then that's what you need for your own healing so it might not just be some random oh the deer told me red that really helps you know don't take it that way if you the deer tells you red say red and feel what that is to you and that could just be healing you from the alignment you are off energetically exactly the what you said feel what it is to you because there is no one thing that red means or or any other word it's like analyzing dreams Um, somebody's dreams are personal to them the associations are personal to them and so what it means to one person is going to be different than what it means to another so so yeah just um uh take so if you're for, for you 
Yeah. So if mentally you're receiving the message by verbalizing it, you really bring it into your body. It doesn't have to be verbalized. You could just write it or, but do some act when you're learning to be telepathic with animals, do mm-hmm. some act of bringing it into your body and making it physical, whether it's speaking or writing or, or just for reference later, it, it's important to take it in on all levels and not just keep it in your file cabinet of your brain. Right. And practice is, is really, really important. And many times at first, you'll just get one or two little things that, that you'll think, well, that wasn't earth shaking or that wasn't a, a major new piece of information. But if you keep it up, it gets deeper and and more you get more information but but like with anything else the more you practice it the the better it gets and it's fun and it's really really cool when they let you know something and and all of a sudden it strikes you wow that was really right on and that would not have come out of my head because i wouldn't have ever thought of it and it's and those practicing. things happen Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that practicing in the beginning that gives you your own confidence. It all just works. It's a matter of getting our own confidence that it works. Yes, absolutely. Also, being telepathic with pets, if you do the ther- plain communication, like go to the beach or the woods or wherever you'd like to be and um, bring them there in your visualization and talk to them there, I find with domestic animals, that's very helpful, um, like don't jump on the couch or don't eat my plants. If you go to the third plane and actually talk to them about it there, they'll just stop. You can tell them not to in person over and over and they're going to keep doing it. You tell them that on a soul level. I don't know if it's because they think it's their idea or if, if they just feel it and understand it better from that perspective. I think it's that they understand it better. Um, I think it's a matter of kind of explaining to them why this is bothersome to you. And um, not always. They won't always take it and decide to to do it that way. But maybe they're trying to teach you something, like even patience for that matter. But, um, But the animals need some practice too. I've found that the ones who have had experience with people actually listening to them telepathically, um, those are much easier to connect with. The others, I mean, we're thinking things all the time, and if they were constantly paying attention to the stuff going on in our heads, it would drive them crazy. So they tune us out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they tune us out. But when we actually start connecting directly with them with intent and um, asking them it's for their awesome. input or explaining them to them, yeah, then they they start listening more too. I was thinking about you just a couple of days ago because we left and we left our puppy dogs with De- Miss Debbie mm. and um, because we needed to come get settled first. And sure. my one puppy dog was just like stuck to me when she's usually not, but the heart connection was just so strong and she was worried. And then I thought about you, what would Adele do? And so, and Debbie says, talk to her. So mm-hmm. I just talked to her and said, you're going to have so much fun over with Debbie's and we'll be back to get you and it's all good. And I went over there. She didn't even know I was alive the next day. She just totally was comfortable <laughs> and confident. She wasn't afraid anymore. She just went right on about herself. Yep. The same is true I've found with uh, medical procedures. If they have to have a surgery or something done, if you explain to them ahead of time what's going to happen and why, and the end result, which is that they get to come home and, and they'll heal for a few days and everything will be fine, they have much less problem with it. If they that don't really know would... anything and you just dump them in a clinic and they have this painful, traumatic experience that's scary with strangers, etc., it's it's pretty unpleasant. But well, then when if they you wake up numb and you don't know what's going to happen or something, that'd be scary too. Sure, exactly. If yeah. you're rehabilitating, you don't know you're rehabilitating. You may think this is the new and be so depressed by the time it's over. That's a yeah. great idea. I try to do that with people too, you know, if they yep. if they just can see the other side of it better. Mm-hmm. Yes. Also too, you want to when you're doing telepathy with animals or anyone, if you can get more in the mental or soul 
aspects of it. I, I always do all my telepathy soul to soul, but a lot of the animal people will do it heart to heart and the empathy will get so great that it will make you if somewhat if animal sick. You'll get sick. You feel too much. So I just want to caution people when you're doing heart to heart telepathy, that it is more about awareness than it is to feel someone else's pain. If you need help managing your empathy, cause you don't want to go around feeling bad because other people feel bad then you can get a hold of me at MajesticInsights.com and I can help you and give you some tools to manage that differently. Yeah, I had to learn that. Um, and, And it does feel a lot better. It doesn't mean that you feel less for them or anything like that. It's that uh, you don't take it into yourself. And and you you are, it's better to help. Yeah. Yeah, you're better exactly. strong you so that you're the lighthouse. You always remember to be the lighthouse and they'll find you. If you go around trying to help everyone else, then it the the energy is more diluted in a way that's not as helpful. True. And everybody has a path and sometimes their path doesn't include us fixing it. Yes, that's very important. We can get back to that and that when we get back to talk about your journey into spiritualism and how that can help others find their way and how it can also um, use listening to animals as a point of reference for helping other people get there. So we'll be back right after the break. Thank you for listening to Majestic Insights Radio on Transfer. got attitude keys to the rescue adjust your attitude with keys clear protein waters so refreshing just a few sips of keys will give you a whole new outlook thanks to 22 grams of the happiest protein on earth tongue tingling tasty without the guilt of naughty or nasty ingredients if that doesn't put a smile on your face maybe you need to drink too put a little in your attitude with keys protein water on amazon or at key K-E-E-S, please, dot com. Chris Stanis is a spiritual leader and healer and teaches a course on how you can transform your life through a meditation and healing system that will manifest your spirit's dreams. She manifested the Women of Wisdom Conference, the Women of Wisdom book, and this radio show. And she can show you how to change your life, too. Are you ready? Visit the website and contact her at VoicesOfWomenToday.com. That's VoicesOfWomenToday.com. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. 
If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Hey everybody, welcome to Majestic Insights Radio and our guest Adele Kuhn. Hey Adele. Hey Carrie. So we were just talking about tele- telepathic communication, which is important in zillions of ways. We could do a whole month on just telepathy. But as far as connecting with animals and how it's important and in your book, you give us lots of examples, and we follow animals through their journey and stuff. And um, it's just a beautiful story. Everybody check out Adele's book, Listening to Animals. You can find her on Facebook at Listening to Animals, and you can message her there. What, do they buy your book on Amazon? Right. It's available in print version with photos and on Kindle. Oh, and also fantastic. bookstores can order it, so it can be ordered through bookstores as well. Yeah, that's great. It's a great read. And it seemed to be a really, um, well, you seem moved to do it, so it was like her purpose to get this information out. And I keep my readers keep telling her she's writing another book. She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but I think that she will. She just doesn't know it yet. I'm like that little bird that told you earlier about the first book. Yes. <laughs> yeah, everybody who, or well, everybody who's talked to me about it, who has read the book, has said, of course, different things from different people, but um, each one has said that they've had some kind of a, a an awakening. Um, one woman said she had some kind of a healing. She was going to examine it further and then tell me more about that. Um more information, things they didn't know about animals, some of the animals, and um, yeah, just some insights into themselves. And um, one woman told me that she definitely, it definitely changed her life. And so there's there's way more in there than just the animal stories, but the animal stories are behind it all. So also, too, I mean, there's a, a zillion ways to get open with your intuition. Like I usually teach people energy fields. Um, Adele was one of our, I also does Reiki. And when I'm first teaching people to feel energy fields, I usually have them do it on plants because, you know, plants don't talk back or argue or anything. And then just they, a plant will train you telepathy really nice. True. Yeah. Yeah. I have a favorite tree outside of my house that I look at and spend a lot of time thanking for for just being there. But I love trees. Yes. And I can see their auras and I love that. I I don't see people's auras very much or very often because you can't really sit and stare at somebody. It's kind of rude. But the plants don't mind and you can connect with them that way and insects as well. Insects have amazing auras. Insects also telepathy with animals. It's like you can, um, like we had some spiders, and I just sprayed with peppermint, which they don't like. How nice is that? And then also, I just asked them to please go to some other part of the building that didn't affect us, and we didn't get bit anymore. I didn't have to use any pesticides or anything. Yes. Yeah, and spiders, if they show up on my kitchen counter or someplace obvious and seem kind of determined, I always put a drop of water near them. And very often they'll run over and get some water, and then they'll go away and disappear again, and I don't have to see them or worry about them. But, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if all um, insects are so receptive, (laughs) but um, spiders for sure. Well, there are people who talk to mosquitoes and ask them to not inject 
the the solution that um, causes our reaction, which causes the swelling. And the, they tell them they're fine with letting them have a, a bit of blood for food. I mean, how much can a, a mosquito eat? It certainly can't harm us. But to please not inject that stuff. And there are people who swear that it works. So <laughs> The mosquito would probably stay away from me because I would send it a visual of being smashed if it came near me. <laughs> <laughs> I just ask them not to bite me, and and I rarely have a problem with, with anything. I use yeah. this essential oil that they just don't want to be on me. They just kind of buzz around me, and it smells really good. <laughs> yeah, that works too. Much better than the pesticides. Those things are, are they're poisonous to insects and a lot of everything else. So people too. Yes, definitely. So, um. Tell us about this next section in your book about your journey to spiritualism. Well, I decided when I was a a child even that there were things in the Protestant religion that my parents belonged to that didn't seem godly or kind to me. Things like, um, well, just even divine punishment, hell, that kind of thing, or... Um, particularly the exclusionary things with if you belong to that church, then you don't go to heaven. You, you automatically go to hell. Or if you believe in that other religion or or no religion. And that didn't seem godlike, didn't seem divine to me. So my decision was I had, I could believe in that stuff or be an atheist and not believe in gods at all. And that was what oh. I chose for many years. Because, again, it didn't make sense. How do babies go to hell because they weren't baptized in a particular religion? I mean, it just, yeah, didn't, didn't work. make sense. No. Yeah. And so then with the animals, they started talking about um, past lives together. And I had read a little bit about reincarnation at some point, but not much. Just decided I had other things that were more interesting to me, and so I didn't take the time. But, um, but then I started focusing on that a bit, and I learned that that really is kind and empowering, because at least the form of it that I think is that resonates with me is that we each choose our own path, and so we choose the challenges and experiences that we have in this lifetime with the reason with the purpose of learning and so in that way there is no divine punishment because we aren't being punished we chose this for a positive reason and the divine source whatever creator whatever um actually does give us complete free will in that we are then allowed to follow the path that we chose. And and there's always total unconditional love involved in this. So so that seemed reasonable to me. And thinking about, well, past lives with some of these critters, that sounds good. Um, I'm okay with that. So anyway, it went on from there. But but that's kind I of that interesting um you know, at Majestic Insights, we do past life stuff. I can do it hypno-wise or I can do it reading-wise. But, you know, then there's that whole concept, which I'm not so familiar with, but I'm not so sure is wrong, is, um, you know, there really is no time. Everything's happening at once. It's about your energy field now, changing now, changes all the different relationships. So even if you don't believe in past lives, when it comes to a therapy or a learning experience or an expression of where you are now in relation to where you were or want to be, it's very effective. Yes. So even if your dogma didn't allow you to ex- express that, it's a very good way of explaining what you've chosen. Some people get stuck in that karmic trap. Well, I had 20 past lives with him. I have to endure him again. No. You don't. You can change now. So you have to be careful when does the lesson become the habit, you know? Yes. Well, and if you look at it even from the level of psychology instead of from the level of spirit, which is what you're talking about, um, we can get past childhood issues, childhood traumas and that sort of thing and and change our 
habits or patterns that are no longer serving us. And we can do it through hypnotherapy, through energy, however we want to work on it. But, um, but yeah, even from the level of psychology, um, there isn't blame and, and there also isn't, um, we, we still have our power. We can get rid of it. We can get past yes. it. We still have our power. And that's what, um, when you came back into spiritualism, you were owning that power back because you'd been told black and white. So you picked, mm-hmm. but it's, it's, uh, more universal than that. It's the energy of connecting with the earth and the seventh plane or, or God or source or however the energetic other people see it. Yes. And I think that the animals and them allowing you to really find that oneness with your source and who you are on this earth, I think that could really help a lot of people. I think the animals are that neutral, unconditional love that other people trust in a way they might not trust each other or the dogma of religion or some idea that they are unfamiliar with. Yep. I think it's time for a break, Carrie. Oh, Well, we'll get right back to Majestic Insights Radio. Each month, listen to Live More Radio with co host Ali Katz. Join Ali and Dr. Pat as Ali introduces new ways to bring balance back to your life through meditation, sleep, and exercise techniques so you can live your truly authentic life. Stress less, live more. To learn more about Ali, visit ATOZENMeditation.com. Let the transition begin. Tune in to the hit show, Majestic Insights Radio, Success for Life's Transitions, with host Carrie Keith. Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher who will lead you through her empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, and most vibrant life. Let Carrie teach you the tools of transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com. Do you want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones? Travel the world? Live spontaneously? Get ready, because the Chip Justice Show is here. Hosts Dr. Pat Basile and Chip Justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life. Living a life you love is the end game in this new, inspirational, and empowering show. Positive changes for life you'll love. Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. Tune in to the Angels and Answer Psychic Radio Show with Clairvoyance Artie Hoffman and Sky Siegel every Thursday for a two-hour show, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Transformation Talk Radio. Artie and Sky deliver spiritual and motivational messages with passion and a sense of humor. Call in 800-930-2819 for live and on-air readings. Visit ArtieHoffman.com and SkyOfAngels.com. Holistic Medical Center is where you find it all. A healthy space with doctors who care, see, and listen to the whole you. Hi, this is Dr. Darvish. If you have not found an answer to your chronic symptoms, you will find answers here at Holistic Medical Center. Our doctors find the root cause of your symptoms and guide your body towards healing naturally. We transform lives from within. Visit drdarvish.com or call 425-451-0404. Tune in to the hit show Master's Chambers with your trusted friend, Connie Fife. Mondays, 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. 
Each week, Connie will connect you with the best of the best thought leaders from around the globe to share their strategies and best practices. Getting better together. To book Connie, visit ConnieFifeSpeaks.com. 30 you're listening to Majestic Insights Radio. You can tune in every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 6, 3 p, or 4 p.m. Eastern. And you can also listen to the archives on Transformational Talk Radio. You can look at upcoming shows on the website at Transformational Talk Radio. And you can also look up any of the guests and what they have to offer and how to reach them there. Today we have Adele Kuhn, and we've been talking about her book, Listening to Animals, and you can buy that on Amazon. You can also catch her on Facebook, Listening to Animals, and message her there with all kinds of questions. And um, Adele, we want to finish up with your spiritualism journey there. Okay. Um, well, I just I started learning about energy as well and the fact that everything is energy as far as a bottom line goes which further explains i guess our our total connection with everything on the planet and and in the universe and the fact that we are each of us a piece of that so what we think and do and put out there has an effect on on everything the more positive we are, the more we put out positive energy and the more we can actually make a, a positive difference. So that to me is really cool and, and I like being able to do that. The more, I, the more I practice it, the positivity, the better it works, the better I get at it, um, breaking old habits of, of thinking of things as good or bad or... Um, yeah, just well, just, just being heart centered. Yes, you know, every, most people have good hearts and good heads. It's just they don't work at the same time. <laughs> you know, put the timing belt around your heart and head like a infinity sign, so that your heart chakra and your crown chakra are working together. That's a great and way to put it. it. Thanks. That's a, yeah. a that's what happens when we get wobbly and we start overthinking things. It's just because we're our our heart and our head are out of sync. Just sync them back up. It's really that easy, but people aren't used to easy. People are used to hard. That's another belief we can pull and change. I think we find that with the animals too. You know, like you see the birds, they seem to have it easy. But, um, you know, some of the animals that are real afraid or, or have issues, you know, that's experience and that's just um, you're kind of living on memories or you're projecting memories into the future. And when you do that, you create that accidentally. So exactly. definitely be careful with what you're putting out there. Because thoughts I've, and words are magical. They are. And I've noticed with the wild animals anyway, that um, they seem to have such a positive attitude about things and they're living in the now instead of, as you were talking about, um, worrying about the future or uh, being upset about the past or whatever. If they're the prey animals, if they're frightened by a predator and they escape, it isn't very long before they're back to eating and, and just living their life. They will be aware and so forth. And if the predator gets close again, then they will again do what they have to do to escape, but but they don't sit around worrying about it. And, dwelling um, on it or... Dwelling on it, yes. They just are who they are and and um, they follow the the behavior of their kind and and um, yeah, they're, well, they're really a great with, example to follow. Well, someone, I'm more of a dog person, but some people say about the cats got it so made because they will run full force and then they lay down and relax. You know, they 
they can just go full force to relax like in seconds. And we should be able to turn our relax on that easy if we want to and not just be stuck in full force till midnight staring at the ceiling because we can't <laughs> turn it off. True. Yeah. Yeah. And and the dog puppy dogs, you know, they get in the back of the truck. They don't they don't care where they're going. No, <laughs> they're just glad to be going somewhere. <laughs> yeah. The living in the now is important. And if connecting yes. with animals can help people get there, um, Adele believes it it can and I believe it can and um and some people choose that way and that can help you develop your own intuition and all kinds of spiritual healing true yes very definitely and it's fun I mean they're it's they're awesome beings and when we start paying attention to their behavior and the way they live and that sort of thing um they're just magnificent it's once it's fascinating I was sitting at, at the, the sleeping child house and they had mm-hmm. there were these there were two eagles golden eagles one sat in the tree and one was eating on something that had died naturally but all the other little birds and little animals they were all like having thanksgiving here in in this back field of where i was sitting in, in this porch and the one eagle would watch above while the other eagle was down with all the other little animals. And I found it, it was like something from Snow White or St. Francis. They were all just getting along so beautifully. And the big guys could have pounced the little guys, but they didn't. Yep. They had a friend sitting up in the tree just watching out so that yep. everybody was safe. And those two eagles would take turns watching out while they just... And all the different animals just got along so beautifully. And I wish that for people, too. (laughs) Me, too. That is huge, Carrie. uh, That's a huge ability that the animals seem to have. You even notice on videos um, about predators and prey, like in Africa, there's a a lion walking around and uh, the antelope. The lion isn't hunting. The antelope know the lion isn't hunting, so they just keep eating. And, and so they they cooperate. They interact in in peaceful ways as well as the the predator prey um, ways. But if that lion was thinking hungry, he would be running crazy. <laughs> exactly. Yep. And they can tell. Speaking of the telepathy, you know, the animals yeah. have. I've noticed here if a hunter comes on my property with, and I we have deer and stuff around the place all the time wild turkeys and everything but if a hunter comes on the place they all disappear poof they're gone true or the and opposite the first day of hunting season hunter hit an elk or on the private land <laughs> exactly they know <laughs> they yeah. do know okay we want to thank you for coming today miss adele thank you for having me carrie and everybody check out adele's book listening to animals You can get it on Amazon. You can learn more about it on Facebook at Listening to Animals, and you can message Adele from there also. And we want you to tune in to Majestic Insights Radio next week at Tuesday. We have Edie Weinstein, and she is optimistical, and she is the bliss expert and helps you find your bliss, and she's really good at helping you redevelop patterns and all kinds of wonderful stuff. So you can message me at at 503-400-4603 or go to www.majesticinsights.com you can email me at majesticinsight at gmail.com I want to thank you for being with us today have a great day you've been listening to Majestic Insights Radio success for life's transitions with host Carrie Keith Carrie is a gifted intuitive coach, healer, and teacher. Let Carrie lead you through her most empowering techniques of ancient wisdom and awareness so you can live your happiest, healthiest, most vibrant life. Carrie gives you tools for transformation that will help you experience success for all of life's transitions. To learn more about Carrie, visit www.majesticinsights.com.